I'm Yoli Robertson. I represent District 104. It's, um, it comprises of uh, North Miami, North Miami Beach, little part of Miami, Opalauka, Norland. It's a very, very large district, a very diverse district. Uh, we have uh, a large portion of African American, uh, Hispanic, Haitian American, Caribbean American, and uh, senior citizen. It's a very, very uh, impressive district because we have almost every language in the district and I'm very honored and privileged to represent uh, the people of District 104. I am currently sitting on uh, policy and budget. I am the lead Democrat in Healthy Family. I am in the Healthcare Council. I am in telecommunication, uh, utility and telecommunication and also in select com uh, committee for condominium association. I know all Floridians know and probably you know that we're facing the most difficult year uh, financially speaking since I've been in the Florida House. We have, uh, we just passed the bill, uh, worked on the bill last year and today we're going to vote on that bill to reduce last year budget by about uh, two billion dollars and you know that we've held a special session uh, during the summer to reduce the budget again and uh, the estimating uh, revenue committee just came back with a result with a review yesterday uh, forecasting the budget, uh, the future, the financial future of the state of Florida to, to be even bleaker than we expected. So we have a tough choice. We're just going to have to uh, prioritize the, need, uh, the needs of the, Florida, of the state of Florida to make sure that we still provide quality care to our senior, the most vulnerable uh, people, and with fun education. Uh, I have to tell you that we, we are here today as a result of uh, making policy in a vacuum. We have been reacting in the state of Florida uh, as opposed to really looking at the, uh, the state at, as a whole and start making policy to going forward. For instance, uh, if we start funding public edu education and we start trying to work to make the state of Florida uh, an edu the education maker of the nation that it should be, if we continue to have a state that is a service state, a minimum, we have more people on minimal wage than high wage uh, workers in the state of Florida. We not, we're going to continue to see uh, such dismal uh, performance uh, going forward, and that doesn't help our state. I think as legislators, as policymakers, we should not be reacting to the pulse. What the public is uh, is saying, we want. For instance, we want we need to be tough on crime. We know we must be tough on crime. We must keep our citizens safe. But locking up everyone has not been the answer. When the election is coming, people react to what's going to happen in uh, doing election. We should be making prudent policy. For instance, we should have a reentry program for people who are in jail because 75 percent of people who go to jail they do come out. When they do come out, we don't want them to come back in our community worse than when they went in. We need to provide some kind of program for them so they can have uh, a better future and they can t we can turn them away from crime. We need to keep violent criminal in, in, uh, behind bars, no question about that. But statistics shows that 60% of the people that we have in jail, they're not in there because of, uh, because of violent crime, they're in there because of uh, mental health problem or substance abuse problem or dual diagnosis which is they have both issues so we need to start taking those issues seriously we need to start really addressing those issues by investing heavily on prevention we need to save money we need to be good steward by investing in pol and prevention so we can prevent uh, having to spend so heavily in incarceration and uh, and uh, homelessness, I mean, people are homeless, they don't have a place to stay because of the revolving door. They go to jail, they come back, and so on. So that is what we need to do. We have a, a system where I think uh, about three quarters of, our, of the money that we spend in healthcare costs is spent on treating people. 
And by the time someone, for instance, we have a, an epidemic of uh, obesity, those children that are coming up at 10, 11 years old start having diabetes, type 2 diabetes. So we know by the time they t are they 22 or by the time they are in their 20s, they're going to start having kidney problem, high blood pressure problem. And high blood pressure, kidney problem, what do they do? We invest more. We pay more for them. We have to pay for dialysis and so on. As opposed to if we have, if we invest in uh, prevention, trying to teach children how to eat healthily. And one thing that we do in the pool neighborhood, the food that are uh, sold there in those um, food places, they are of lower quality. They have uh, higher fat content, uh, they don't have vegetable as much, children don't, don't really, they are not taught to really love vegetables, and so on, exercises, and prevent those children from becoming um, uh, sick adult. Because we have five chronic diseases that are eating out, uh, eating our budget out. And uh, if we don't address those situation, like uh, preventive care, I mean, uh, pre uh, screen people for cancer way ahead, we are uh, black people or minority people, they're not more prone to cancer than uh, other people. The only problem is that they don't get to be screened. They are not educated as to the need to be, I mean, to be screened. And this is a work that we all have to, to, you know, to put our hand around and work together to eliminate those kind of disparity, healthcare disparity. And when we eliminate the health, healthcare disparity, we're going to save money for the state. We're going to have money to invest in education. Um, I am very proud uh, that we just have uh, a medical school. Uh, we funded the FIU Medical School this year, and uh, the president of that school have, has promised me that he's, he and his staff is going to work with me to recruit minority all over the state of Florida. And we're going to keep our children here so we can have that cultural diversity uh, that uh, to eliminate the, the gap in disparity in healthcare because we need more providers who understand the need of the uh, of the community. And